James O'Keefe has quite the history of undercover video exposés that he's done over the years. And this week, he's dropping the Disney tapes, the first of which came out on Thursday, June 20th. And they're going to keep going for the next couple of weeks in so far as we know. What's great about these things is that more people from inside Disney, according to O'Keefe, have already begun reaching out to his O'Keefe media group to share their stories of potential and alleged racial discrimination in hiring practices inside the House of Mouse. And today we've got Ron Coleman and Joe Nearman, a.k.a. Good Logic on YouTube, sharing their legal opinions on what James O'Keefe might have on his hands. We wanted to hire somebody in the department a few years ago now who was half black, but didn't like appear half black. And um, there was a creative it. executive who was like, we're not, like, that's not, that's not what's going on. talked about this on the Sunday live stream just a few days ago that James O'Keefe of the O'Keefe Media Group, formerly of Project Veritas, had something coming this week that he announced at Turning Point over last weekend. And that this week, his attention was going to be turned to the Walt Disney Company. And the Disney tapes would be dropping today, Thursday, June 20th. And the first part of them has... Just about an hour or so ago, we got the James O'Keefe tapes. The first part, again, like I mentioned. And as some folks out there have taken a casual glance at these or maybe even watched the whole thing, we're going to go through it all and dissect it. Some people out there think that, well, this isn't anything that's terribly surprising, but there is something different about this. Because instead of us just discussing on live shows theory and conjecture, around what Disney's practices are. And those practices are very apparent when it comes to, say, what we see on the big and small screens, film and television. But there's something different when it comes to actual hiring. Not the creative or, art or artistic decisions that are made at companies like Disney or Paramount or Warner Brothers or Sony or anybody else for that matter. That's a different topic, but when it comes to actual hiring on the corporate side of Disney, is Disney perhaps, allegedly, in violation of anti-discrimination laws? And that seems to be exactly what James O'Keefe is digging into, and it looks like he may have found something. Good, good news day. I mean, a lot of confirmation to stuff that uh, we've already suspected. But also, um, for me, I'm, I'm actually really proud of myself because I've been preaching for since we've met that despite the data, Disney doesn't actually think they're lose they're they're not trying to lose money. That's the thing. Like despite the data, they are not trying to lose money. Yet that is the result. And here we have from the horse's mouth, uh, one of the guys <laughs> confirms that, which we'll get into later. But thank you for bringing me on today for this discussion. You know our buddy, the great Ron Coleman, is here. How you doing, guys? <laughs> from the great state of New York, also. Not far from Mr. Coleman. Good logic is here. What's up, Joe? Morning. <laughs> <laughs> right off the bat, I've got a feeling that Michael Giordano is no longer a senior vice president at Team Lee. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's you know, a made-up job anyways, but yes, he probably doesn't have that anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah, script, I was going to say, uh, I mean, and I'm not, look, I want to be, I want to be abundantly clear. I'm not, it's a funny joke. I'm not trying to laugh at the fact that somebody may have potentially lost employment over this, uh, but at the same time, um, you're probably right, and in and, and, and script, you could probably like you just did, lend some credence to that. Uh, how fast do you think the reaction is from a company, the scale of Disney, to seeing something like this? Now they've identified the person. What, what do you think is going on inside Disney right now? Well, um, if Michael was smart, considering the fact that he discovered he was being recorded many weeks ago, he prob if he was smart, he would have gone to Disney Legal and he would have said that he is under he was possibly going under uh, some type of journalistic entrapment 
and that anything that comes out is really just him trying to, you know, get in the pants of the date that he's with, as opposed to actually compromising the integrity of Disney. And yep. he may even be with the, consulting with other lawyers to sign affidavits saying everything he said was a lie or whatever, whatever BS to try and keep his job. The other aspect is that Disney won't care because, again, he's a senior vice president and team lead, which really doesn't mean anything. It just means that he's part of a negotiating team. Mm -hmm. um, he, he works with uh, the actual people that write the checks and the people that he would be um, trying to get the best deals out of with agents and managers, uh, not even really with talent all that much. So he, he's a very low tier middleman. But again, when you're in Hollywood, every position has a certain level of um, pseudo pedigree to it to try and make you sound more important than you actually are. Uh, and it's fun. Joining us also, uh, the great Jonas J. Campbell. Uh, you know a thing or two about investigative journalism. Glad you could join us. <laughs> I try to. I've never I've, I've never pulled this particular scheme to try to get information, though. You should. So, <laughs> what you're saying is what I'm what I'm hearing right now is valiant. I want to raise in some cameras uh, <laughs> and so. probably a, probably a new home gym. <laughs> yeah there have been times where you know there's, they, there's no way we're hiring a white male person. just kind of it's, yeah unspoken uh, there are times when it's spoken but how would they say it there's no way we're hiring a white male person. <laughs> they say like it, straight to you yeah. or okay they be very careful how they message that to agents as far as disney's concern i'm a white male that's not what the, who they're looking to promote is that we wanted to hire somebody in the department a few years ago now um, who was half black but didn't like appear half black. And um, there was a creative it. executive who was like, we're not, like, that's not, that's not what's going on. Like, they wanted somebody in meetings who would appear a certain way and he wasn't gonna, gonna bring that to the meeting. I mean, it kind of feels like we're, you know, at some point, there's going to be a lawsuit. That's kind of how it feels, just because of, you know. And that is a lawyer talking. So how does Disney explain? Do you remember the good old days? Yeah. Do you remember the good old days when being gay was was good enough to get you into the inner circle? Apparently, it's not anymore for this guy. If he, if he was passed over, if well, he's I, straight. He's on a he? date with a woman. He, he's, yeah. Yeah. He? He's he, well. Yeah. This at least was. He, I at think, least he also likes women. I think I this know. was. It seemed like. And I could be mistaken, but I think you're right, Script. I, I got the impression that the way this guy was brought into the conversation was that he was doing some online dating apps. I um, can't say I've heard anything shocking or surprising yet. It's yeah, we, we've all, I think we all have, are well aware of Disney's embrace of DEI. They put it on display more prominently, perhaps, than any company on the planet when you consider the content that they produce. Right, that they yep. they certainly embrace it. You'd be, you'd almost consider them hypocrites if they didn't do it, right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> based on what they show us. Well, they're actually going to be calling it EDI pretty soon. Uh, I've already got word of that. So they're oh. just changing the letters, but they're doing it. It's going to be the same thing. Uh, no, seriously, because uh, it's too close um, to die. That's yes. Why. Wait, e e either so they're going to put equity first. Yes, equity, diversity, and inclusion. Um, what was so the that, other one? J. It was going to be Jedi for a while. They tried to go for that. Oh, that that's a that's a sub program that, within EDI. Yeah. That's the other part too. I mean, there's that. There's Bridge. They, they're coming up with all new um, initialisms and acronyms to uh, to hide this type of stuff. But I mean, I've been hearing, yeah. I've been hearing their quote unquote code words with it, which is like, well, we're we're going to hire someone outside of the box. We're going to do outside the box th th uh, thinking. We're not going to hire the usual suspects. As far back as 2016. I mean, that that's just been the case. Yeah. In fact, I remember in early 2017, the WGA was starting an initiative to promote female writers in science fiction and action. Um, they were holding networking parties and conferences and stuff to do that, to try and get people of those interests, uh, women of those in those interests and in genres to get a, a, a better step up to to do that, which nobody really had a problem with, because if you're a science fiction writer and happen to be a woman and you're good, well, then, yes, we should get a spotlight on you. But slowly over the years, that manip was manipulated into something else, something that where it's just if you're happen to be a woman who happens to fit a whole bunch of these other aspects of their personal life, that will then come first over the fact of, oh, well, what do you write and how well do you write and what stories have you told? Those things always seem to be getting pushed further and further down on the list of qualifications for, for people. And here we have a guy who from the I mean, I've, I've watched the entire thing. He clearly feels frustrated um yeah i mean look I, I said this is the first time i'm listening to this and as he's talking i'm like 
this guy sounds like a perfect whistleblower for James O'Keefe. Like if he can get over his feels being hurt about how he, you know, he's publicly being exposed, that it sounds there's, like there's he has that. a lot of information and and resentment that that's potentially built up there that could become an asset to O'Keefe in further exposing this. That gets, I mean, yeah. the specifics of it do get a, get better on that score. To say that the Disney company has had a tumultuous five years. Well, that would be an understatement. Major box office flops, a losing battle with the state of Florida, and a stock that is Midnight one of the touch. worst performers on Wall Street. That's crazy. Uh, what channels were out there pumping that information for the last three years? I'm glad it finally got through. Later. One of the top senior vice presidents claims that they not only discriminate against white men when recruiting and hiring middle management, they actually give bonuses for hiring and retaining employees that are specifically not white. According to these videotapes, Disney blatantly discriminates against whites, white men in particular. Let me say right there, this is a story that we've heard before. Bonuses being handed out based on diversity hires. Management is financially incentivized to racially discriminate. And we saw that, we, you know, we, we've heard stories about that at Disney. We've seen video of this previously with a senior executive, I believe the CEO, the president of IBM, um, talking on there about management bonuses being tied to how many non-white, non-men you hire. So this is also going on at Disney. And again, for people out there thinking, well, we kind of knew all this. Well, yeah, but now we're actually going to have somebody from inside Disney at an upper level management position confirming this firsthand. We have a diversity, equity, inclusion yeah. department who's okay. very involved in like setting standards to make sure that our shows have diversity. Do you think like Bob has a say in the diversity stuff when they're casting people? Like 100%. Yeah. So what? He, he gives the director. I mean, for each show, for no, each not show. that specifically, but like you know, hey, I want there, I want every show to have a substantial. Yeah. Iger even as a chief diversity officer. Now, up until recently, that was Latondra Newton who played a big part in dragging Disney full bore into its losing culture war by promoting discriminatory hiring practices and introducing gay, lesbian, transgender, non-binary, and other characters into Disney's children's animated series and films. Now, I want to say that's one of the distinctions, and Ron, you and I have talked about this before, and Joe, if you want to throw in on this one as well. There's a difference between, you know, we're talking about things that may potentially be legally actionable. There's a difference between creative decisions, wanting to put certain themes or characters or whatnot into creative artistic devices, movies, television. That's one thing versus hiring right is that there, there's a distinction there for the audience i would i would say there's, there's a distinction you can't obviously you can't decide that we're not going to hire someone on the basis of their race as as a general practice to be to be fair though i mean if you want to if they're making a portrayal of the life of jackie robinson you know there's you can't say that that right. <laughs> it consider every redhead that's out there to play the right. role. You know, right. we, that, that we, we've often discussed when it comes on the talent side, it's almost impossible. You need a true smoking gun mm -hmm. that said, you know, this actor or that, uh, this white actor and this black actor, would we, we can agree creatively, would both be great in the role. Since mm -hmm. we are now we since we now have a policy of not employing white actors when a black actor is available we'll give the job to the black actor short of something like that which in the you know which is not likely to exist um on the creative side that's that's never going to be where you know it's it's on the management stuff like you know like like this fellow's talking about where it gets interesting She's the head of the, oh, I know you're talking the, about the head of the, 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 the African American media. Yeah. 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 So is that like kind of her deciding? She that? oversees a lot of now what's interesting is is that they, they this seems to be they're talking present tense about the lady who's in charge, Latondra Newton. Or at least in, they don't mention her by name in the video, but my understanding is pro, if I remember right, Latondra Newton is not at Disney anymore. She had moved on about a year ago, wasn't it? Or six months ago. Yes, she um, was part of the uh, great exit of, con of yeah. people. Pro, you're muted, so I'm answering for yeah. you here. 
Uh, she left. She left almost at the same time that Christine McCarthy exited. Yes, if I'm not mistaken, yes. there were several people, and this was like the oh, by the way, they've lost their chief diversity officer. Losing your CFO is obviously a much more important uh, thing for the company. But there were several C-suite executives who moved on all at the same time, and she was one of them. There was a rumor going around that she wanted to be considered for CEO, and then she uh, was uh, walked out the door. Yeah, and, and, and that was part of it. Uh, a lot of people left Disney after Bob Iger came back and then subsequently got renewed um, – summer of 2023 last year if you remember he came in late 22 bob Iger was or bob chapek excuse me was fired Iger came back in late 22 he was supposed to be there for two years and his primary focus was to just hold disney together and get a successor and then in july of 22 matter of fact or july of 23 pardon me a year next month when we have the next Sun Valley Conference, and there's already previews coming out about the Sun Valley Conference in a few weeks in Idaho. Um, that's when Iger came out and announced he'd been given a two-year extension. Around that same time, we saw an exodus, as, as Jonas was saying, Christine McCarthy, the chief financial officer, who pieced out under a, you know what, um, my husband's not feeling well. She had had issues with cancer before. I'm out. And then Latondra Newton subsequently left after that. Um, so, yes, there was some speculation that some of these individuals, like Latondra Newton and Christine McCarthy, were eyeballing the top chair at Disney once Bob Iger were to leave completely. And in an odd twist, you have to be a white Jewish guy to be considered for a C-suite job. More on that next week. But now let's. Hey, what? man. Hey, what? Joe. Joe. What? I meant to what? tell you, I forgot. What? I forgot. Ron already saw it, but I was holding what? this one because I didn't want to spoil it for you. Joe, there's a job waiting for you at the C suite in Disney, brother. Where do I apply? What do I have to do? I'm a white Jewish guy. <laughs> yeah, oh, well, script. Okay. There you go. There you go. I didn't, I didn't know you were Jewish, too. Everyone right, so makes that claim. That is... there's, there's three people on this panel that are eligible to get a C-suite job at Disney. Actually, someone in the chat made a good point. They might retain him so that if a case is brought forth, he would be on the side of the defense and not... Uh, he'd have to be subject to the prosecution um, questioning him, but not a witness for the prosecution. It might be a possibility if they retain him. But does Disney care so much at that point? They can throw him under the bus and not worry about it, really. Ron, I think get, they would you... fire him to say that he was not acting uh, in the company's best interest and was not representing their protocols and yeah, probably they're... broke his NDAs. I don't Ron. see. Well, I don't see how they don't fire him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, in terms of in terms of a ter so he does have a bit of a problem ethically. Um, most employees who speak about secrets about their employers are violating the duty of loyalty. But when a lawyer does it, uh, including an in-house lawyer, he is also violating attorney-client confidentiality. So he might. He might have some problems. Seems to be indicating that this attitude, there's an attitude at Disney that still believes, well, nothing of this has really worked so far. It's pissed off audiences. We're putting adult themes in some cases into children's movies. But if we just keep hammering down this road, eventually we'll make more money. And you're talking about, hey, we have shareholders too, which is exactly what I've been talking about on YouTube for three years. Hey, dummy, you've got shareholders out there. You're supposed to be making them the most money possible. And what you're doing doesn't work, but yet you keep doing it. To your point, it's not that diversity is the problem. It's not. It's the method of which they're approaching it. That's they're it. not approaching it authentically. They're not doing it with any due diligence. They're not. I mean, if I was in any one of these other groups uh, that are leading some of these shows, I'd be insulted at how they don't understand who I am, what I'm trying to do, why I'm trying, why I live my life this way, all that type of stuff. It's just completely low hanging fruit, superficial egotistically driven stuff, Inorgan but... it's inorganic instead of organic it's really what right it is. it's yeah. completely inorganic and forced as opposed to being organic and, natural. and and the marketing department doesn't help because marketing is terrified of new ideas because it takes more work to sell them so how do you op how do you circumvent that well you take something that's well known and you manipulate it just enough so that you can throw in what you're trying to the, the, the new market share you're trying to address 
Mm-hmm. And if you don't do that properly, you get what Disney has been doing for, for the last few years. That's it. And I think one of the funniest examples of all time may be the best example of all time, especially with you know the acolyte being so famously in the entertainment industry news cycles right now. It's one of the stars of that show, Jody Turner Smith, who played the the queen of the witch colony in episode three, right? Or one of the two mothers. Uh, she was famously cast in a BBC uh, um, fictional documentary retelling whatever of Anne Boleyn. She was cast as Anne Boleyn. Do you remember when they made the yeah. black Anne Boleyn? On, on, right. That was Jody Turner Smith from The Acolyte. And that was one of those things where it's like, okay. You see, th- that's the kind of stuff that's like over the top ridiculous. And of course, audiences, they couldn't help but laugh at it. It's like, oh, come on, we know what you're doing. <laughs> Next, you're going to tell me George Washington was not Mexican. As a general rule, you cannot prove that, say, Gina Carano was discriminated against because Mr. Giordano mm-hmm. says that he was discriminated against. Okay. Giordano's testimony is useful if Giordano wants to say that he was discriminated against. There is an exception, however, and that is when you are when you are making a claim, and that is relevant in an employment law discrimination case in many circumstances. When you're making a claim that the defendant engaged in a practice or custom or general way of doing things. Mm-hmm. Then testimony about their general practices may be relevant. Um, that will depend on the case. That will depend on the case. Uh, and because he is in the law department, or was, and is speaking based on experience, there could be circumstances where this would be relevant. Make sure you're subscribed to Valiant Renegade and join us every Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern for the live show.